Would you avoid libraries who favor blanket licenses? From what I've seen, these tend to be big libraries. Is there less potential backend and or sync fees? Um, sorry if it's a silly question. Definitely not a silly question, Shane. Um, it's hard for me to give you guys 100%. You should go with blanket licenses or you should stay away from them because in my career, I've seen actually both of those and I've actually seen both of those situations work out poorly and both of them work out really well. So for all of you guys that do not know what a blanket license is, it's essentially when a library contracts with one of their clients, sorry, um, spilling my water here, uh, one of their clients to um, uh, use their music in their TV shows, movies, commercials, whatever they're doing. But instead of paying per usage, right, of saying, well, every time you want to use a song, we're going to have to negotiate how much we're going to charge you for the one time fee, you know, to use that song they give their clients a blanket license, which basically gives them either a complete access to all their catalog or just a partial access to it. And they say, you know, you pay us, let's just make it easy, 10 grand for this quarter. Um, and you can use anything you want out of our catalog um, and just pay us the 10 grand and you're covered. This does not include any of the back end royalties. So I wanna make sure you guys are all clear. We're only talking about the upfront fees. Now, unfortunately, most libraries that do these blanket deals with their clients, do not then turn around and give you, the composer, a little cut of that, a little taste of that, that money. A few of them do. Very few of them do. Um, one of the libraries that I've been working with uh, in the last few years, they started doing this, which was really awesome. And I still, to this day, even though I'm not active with them, they're still giving me these quarterly little payouts, which is really cool. It's not a lot of money, but hey, it's something. You know, They're giving me a little cut of, well, of all of the music that was used by our clients with these blanket licenses, this is how much of your tracks got used. So this is your share of the blanket fees. Of course, the library keeps a share of it as well. They got to be profitable and keep their lights on as well. So that's actually not that bad, but you know, obviously it would be better if we could collect a lot more of those upfront sync fees. So that would be really nice as well. I will tell you guys in my career, I have gotten very few, I don't know if I've ever gotten one sync fee from a TV placements, uh, from a, like a TV show, let's say a reality show or just sort of a background cue or something like that. The only sync fees that I've ever seen in my career come from commercials, uh, promos, um, specialty, pieces of work, right? So it's a custom opportunity where they want me to create a piece of music for, let's say, a car commercial like I've done Ford. Uh, I did the American Career College. Um, uh, Nike, I did one uh, that like that. Um, uh, what was the Outback? Uh, Outback Steakhouse. So those are the ones where you can see a pretty heavy and, and healthy sync fee because you're creating a custom piece of music for that thing. When clients are going into a catalog of pre-made music kind of already out there, especially when it's like a reality show where they're just throwing tons and tons of music into it. Chances are they're not going to be paying sync fees for individual placements, right? So, but that does not prevent me from creating great, awesome full-time income through those backend royalties, right? So for me, my personal preference is I want more focus on those backend royalties than the sync fees. So I know other producers might see it differently and maybe you have a different approach and you think the sync fees are really where you want to focus on. And that's great. Maybe you only want to work with those libraries that are offering the sync fees. For myself, I know that sync fees come and go. You'll have some months where you get three opportunities in a row and you made an extra 10 grand that month. And it's like, wow, this is awesome. And then it might be six months until you even get another email opportunity for a, an oppor for any sort of a placement that includes a sync fee. So the question is going to be, do you want to be sitting around for six months twiddling your thumbs waiting for that email? Or do you want to have another source of income that's generated? I'm going to put this on this side because I'm going to keep knocking that over. <laughs> I keep doing this. Um, you want to have another source of income constantly building and generating for you so that when you have that six-month window when things are just dry and there's not much happening, and that's going to happen, okay? You're not going to be on fire your entire career. There's going to be months and maybe even a full year where your phone just doesn't ring that much. And it's not that you're irrelevant or you're not useful or anything like that. It's just that your time and place and your particular skill set is not matching for whatever the clients of the libraries are looking for at that particular time, right? So that's why for me, I'm thinking of slow but steady growth in those back end royalties. So it's a big, messy, complicated topic, but I would hopefully have you just think about what is your priority, right? So try to figure out and be clear on yourself. Don't just say, well, Jesse thinks these are important, so I think it's important. That would be very foolish. You should really spend some time thinking about yourself. What's really more important? If the sync fees are what you really are going for, then don't compromise on that. Only sign with libraries that are going to be offering sync fees and giving you a share of it. You know, hopefully 50%. They keep 50, you take the other 50. So 
you got to make that choice for yourself and really sort of do some soul searching to decide what your priorities are and then only work with those libraries that will fit um, those um, uh, parameters that you set up for yourself. Okay. Hopefully that helps.